Nicknamed the gateway to South America, Colombia is home to 49 million people and is the fourth largest country in South America. Colombia has very extreme landscapes, ranging from beautiful tropical beaches to snow-covered mountains of the Andes. The majority of Colombia's land is made of vast greenlands and the Amazon rainforest. The terrain of Colombia has made it difficult for the government to enforce laws, with one-third of Colombia's population living in rural areas and being a country that suffers from vast levels of inequality. Large portions of the land are owned by a tiny elite. In 1948, Colombia was going through a civil war called La Violencia, which translates to the violence. La Violencia was a 10-year conflict that ended in 1958 with El Frente Nacional, an agreement between the two political parties that agreed to rotate the presidency every four years. Many of the liberal farmers organized an agrarian reform called Repúblicas Independientes, where they attempted to take part of the farming land in Tolima. In response, the Colombian government tried to prevent the loss of this land by sending in military forces. The Colombian military battled the farmers, killing the majority of the farmers. However, 50 of them survived. One of the survivors was Manuel Manulande Vélez, better known as Tiro Fijo. He would later form Las Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, or FARC, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, a guerrilla-like terrorist group that followed a Marxist-Leninist ideology in their fight against the staggering levels of inequality on May 27, 1964. The first 15 years of their operation, FARC was very cautious, keeping out of public opinion. However, in the 1980s, FARC developed a rhetoric of national sovereignty due to an event known as Paro Civico Obrero. In 1977, this event demanded that FARC own regions of land in Colombia. In attempts to keep their land from Colombian government, FARC started operations to fund themselves. The primary source of their income came from kidnapping for ransom and narco-trafficking, specifically by taxing, producing, and transporting narcotics. The Colombian government began attacking many of the communist groups, attempting to reassimilate the territories under the control of the national government. It is difficult for the Colombians to define the nature of the conflict between the government and FARC, whether it is a lucrative business, arms dealers influenced by narco-traffic, a cycle of revenge, or a war between farmers and a corrupt system. However, FARC's fight against the government is very violent toward the people of Colombia and its government. They have bombed military facilities and public places targeting the rich, bombing churches and in some instances bombing schools. These bombings have caused many civilian casualties and often killing children. Along with the bombings, FARC has planted landmines within their territories to prevent the military from entering, which is a violation of the Geneva Convention. The landmines often cause civilian casualties to this day. FARC, now deemed a communist terrorist group with ties to narco-trafficking, has become an international affair and has gotten the attention of the United States of America, already fighting the war on terror and drugs. The U.S. has provided millions of dollars in funding and military aid to the Colombian government to fight FARC. The Colombian peace process talks about the peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC. Negotiations between the two groups started back in 2012 and were held in Havana, Cuba. The six main issues talked about in the 2012 peace talks were rural development, political participation, end of the conflict, end to drug trafficking, promise to follow through on these goals, and validation of the group's legitimate, legitimacy. In 2013, during the talks, FARC kidnapped two police officers. Then a week later, a FARC ambush killed four soldiers. All these events were supposedly in retaliation. On May 26 of that year, both sides agreed on a temporary ceasefire. In 2015, the peace agreement was starting to gain the attention of the international community. During January and April of 2015, the peace talks in Havana started to show signs of positive growth. On March 7th, the two parties agreed on a joint project to remove landmines from the country. This was a massive step in the right direction for the two groups. In 2016, years after changing their minds, both sides came together to ratify the peace deal. After four years, the country is starting to show positive signs of this violence coming to an end. President San Manuel Santos was awarded the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in reunifying his country. 
However, recently the peace deal formed in 2016 is starting to fall apart. As the new president, Ivan Duke Marquez, is currently taking steps to eradicate the peace deal, as he thinks FARC is not upholding their end of the deal. Still being involved with drug trade and not surrendering their weapons, in response, FARC has threatened to take up arms, making Colombians feel like it's never-ending cycle of violence.